Hello, my name is Carrie Johnston. And I'm the host of the Yukon Entrepreneur uh, podcast series, and I'm recording today on the traditional territory of Champion and Asiac First Nations in beautiful Dakwakata Haines Junction. And my guest today is Martin. Martin, please introduce yourself. Hi there. Uh, I am uh, Martin Lehner. Um, I work for uh, Tangerine uh, Technology. Uh, we're one of the Yukon's largest IT service providers. And uh, yeah. And Martin, how long has Tangerine been operating for? Uh, we've been around since 2010. So I guess we're going into our 13th year now. Um, so quite a while here in the Yukon. Mm -hmm. And do you have multiple locations in Canada or Yukon? We do, yes. So we're based out of Whitehorse. So we service the entire Yukon. And then uh, we also have an office uh, on Vancouver Island. And so your customers basically Yukon and then also in, into British Columbia there then? Yep, you bet. And what are you learning about your customers during the pandemic? Um, the need to be able to work remotely, to be flexible, that's kind of the biggest thing. Um, nothing, I, I wouldn't see anything other than that has really changed. I mean, we're really engaged with all of our clients. So, I mean, you know, they're, they're used to us, we're used to them. Um, just being able to, to adjust uh, on short notice to, to things like uh, work from home or being able to work remotely or, you know, how do we, how do we get somebody access to something who's all of a sudden had to isolate, you know, unexpectedly or anything like that. That's kind of the biggest thing. Well, and of course we're recording this now in our Omicron surge and we're all into that, you know, recommendations to work from home again and, and many Yukoners isolating because of exposure yep. or COVID-19 and, and their family or themselves. Um, so Martin, what was your first memory of the pandemic? Like when, when did you realize this was going to be a thing? Um, early on, so in early 2020, we decided to open an office in the um, uh, Nanaimo area. Uh, so we had just opened an office in February. And I remember being down there in February. And we just started hearing about this uh, out of Asia. Uh, it wasn't a big deal quite yet. But, um, you know, you roll into March, and basically the world stopped turning at that point. Uh, so I was down there at that time, um, and there was certainly lots of questions on, can I fly home? Uh, can I go back and forth? How is this going to work? So that's, yeah, that's kind of my first memory is kind of that wondering how travel is going to work going forward. And which of the public health measures have you found the most challenging for your business? I mean, I think in our last interview, because this is our second interview, um, you talked about the travel restrictions being a real challenge because I think you were doing some work in Alberta at that time as well. So has that still a challenge for you? Are there others that have been complicated? I'd say it's, the travel is a less of a challenge now at this point. I mean, certainly with vaccines, now you have to be vaccinated to fly, which is fine. I don't have an issue with that. Um, so that, that's actually gotten a lot easier. Um, yeah, I, I, I would say the biggest challenge isn't the restriction or, or measure per se, it's the communication of those measures and how they're implemented. Uh, I mean, we just saw new measures that were announced on a Friday at 7 p.m. I mean, I, I'm not sure why that was a good time to release them. And of course, nobody was around over the weekend to ask any questions or clarify anything because there's a lot of clarifications that were needed um, because again, it, the communication wasn't clear. <laughs> So, you know, come Monday morning, there's lots, lots of questions. Um, that, that's what I would say is the most challenging thing. It's not one specific restriction or another. Look, I mean, we have mask wearing. Okay. I mean, nobody in our office really cares. Fine. We can wear masks, um, uh, distancing, that kind of stuff. That's fine. Um, travel in general, like I said, it, it's, I, I think we're over that hurdle of kind of the, the 2020 where, you know, not getting on an airplane was really a thing where you had to really think about it. I, I think we're past that point. At this point, it's, yeah, it's really communication and how these measures are being rolled out. Um, and quite frankly, some inconsistencies and in things, right? So yeah, I'd say that's the biggest challenge. All of our um, businesses have had to adapt to this sort of new normal. And, and I mean, in many ways as a tech company, your, your job is to kind of help those, a lot of businesses adapt, but you know, um, which adaptations in your business are you most proud of or, or that you've seen other businesses do even? Um, most proud, I would say being able to, 
being able to accommodate the needs of any of our clients, right? I mean, so we had needs that were literally from one day to the next on, I need to be able to work remotely with these things. I need, you know, I need this person to be able to access this or whatever it is. Uh, and there's lots of challenges in our, in our industry, actually today worse than uh, in 2020, which is logistics and being able to get equipment, supplies, that kind of thing. Um, so, so far we've been able to, to, make things work regardless of whether we can, you know, we face those logistics issues or not. So I'm definitely proud of, uh, of our team for being able to do that for people. And I mean, it's, it's, it's a service, right? So we're, we're there to, to do what our clients need us to do. So as long as we're doing that, I am, uh, I'm happy. Yeah. I think in the last one where you were kind of like the great uh, webcam shortage of 20, yeah. 2020 was a big challenge. Like, yeah. Are you seeing supply constraint? Like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Now it's, it's not, now it's a problem of not, it's just not available. Now it's a problem of logistics. So getting it uh, uh, delivered. I know, uh, was it last week or week before when it was really cold um, here in Whitehorse? Uh, that's kind of when this wave really started. Um, there were numerous days where Canada Post didn't deliver anything because they were below their minimum staffing levels. Uh, that's what I was told. And uh, they just had no delivery whatsoever. So they weren't delivering parcels, weren't delivering mail, nothing. Um, so even though maybe I've ordered something and it's here, it might be in Whitehorse, but it's not in my hands. So when do I get it in my hands? That's a different story. Um, and that's, that's going on not just locally. I mean, that's happening nationally. That's happening in distribution centers. It's happening in the U.S. Um, then we've also got, you know, on top of that, there is supply chain shortages still where things aren't being manufactured um, uh, quickly enough in Asia. And it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a huge uh, ripple effect and backlog. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what have you learned about your business model over the last two years? Um, I'm not sure if I'd say learned it, but it was certainly confirmed in that uh, we're very flexible. We can, you know, if we have somebody who needs to or from home or work remotely because kids can't go to daycare, or whatever it is, uh, we can do that. We, we can uh, shift to that pretty quickly. Um, we've always been able to do that. It's never been really something we've had to implement or practice uh, on a larger scale, uh, but being able to, to do that relatively easily is, uh, yeah. Was definitely something learned, but uh, um, our ability to do it was was always known. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to access any pandemic related supports? Any of the funding programs? Any of the sick leave benefit programs? Anything like that been a benefit to your business? Uh, we've had clients go through the pivot program. We haven't had these. We've had clients go through it. They've been happy with that. We've worked with them on those. Um, so those were good, as far as I know. Um, us not being the actual recipient of it. Um, the employee leave, yes, that's actually been probably the best one, uh, is the 14 or 10 days sick leave um, that they provide that's paid. So the employees still get paid if they're off um, because they're isolating or whatever. Um, and then we get paid for, um, for that time. So that's that's been a really good one. I think that one's good. Uh, when I've used it, actually, I need to use it again this month. But uh, when we used it last time, it was a fairly straightforward process. Um, There's a little bit of paperwork, but nothing crazy uh, or over the top. So I think, uh, yeah, that one's probably been the most useful one, I would say. And uh, just before we hit record on this interview, you were mentioning access to rapid antigen tests. And uh, so that would be a program that would be helpful for business. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah that, that would be useful. No, I went to Takini Arena when they started handing them out for individuals. And yeah, they told me they wouldn't give us any if it was a business, which I don't really understand, but okay. <laughs> I mean, we work in some very vulnerable areas, so it would be nice to be able to access those tests. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, whatever mm -hmm. decision maker decided that is, yeah. Mm -hmm. that is and the right. government of, the government of Canada's program that many can apply to in the Southern provinces hasn't been available up here yet. Yeah. So that's, I mean, access to these rapid tests has certainly been kind of a downside or one of the more, uh, uh, disappointing programs that's out. I hope, uh, uh I hope it gets addressed. We'll see. Mm -hmm. 
Um, going forward, how are you thinking about your business differently? Do you see, where do you see opportunity on the horizon for Tangerine? Um, I mean, you know, in, in, in our business, honestly, not that much has changed in our business, uh, tech wise specifically. Um, you know, what's, what do I think of differently? I, I, I would say there's certainly more understanding from clients on how reliant they are on uh, technology and, and how it can help in situations where like people can't leave their house, for example. Um, certainly in that, I mean, otherwise, you know, um, the industry is growing, we're using more and more, and more tech every single day. So I think that will uh, uh, continue for sure. And, and just because it's your field, I mean, what are you observing about, you know, in general, Yukon's internet connectivity? Where, like, are there gaps in, in what we've got? And, like, has that presented challenges during the pandemic? Yeah, I would say yes, sir. Certainly for those outside of Whitehorse, um, you know, internet speeds, um, availability, that's, of course, a concern. Um, you know, since then, I mean, this was happening before the pandemic, but you know, since the pandemic, we uh, we will have some competition. I mean, Starlink is is the main uh, uh, internet service provider that that will be showing up. I mean, uh, lots of people that we know, including clients of ours, have pre-ordered service from them uh, and and are expecting it this year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there there definitely will be a, a competitive entity. I would expect to see more. Uh, and generally, in in uh, in in the free market economy, when you have more than one entity providing a service, generally cost goes down and service quality goes up. That's that's what competition does. That's the whole point. So uh, yeah, hopefully I'm I'm looking forward to uh, yeah to to see that happen. Have you taken up any new skills to kind of better position yourself for for the the economy ahead? Um, no, I mean I've continued to work on on skill sets for sure, existing ones, I would say, building on existing ones. Um, you know, a, a number of years ago, I started specializing in cybersecurity. That's that's kind of my specialty. Um, this past year, I, I graduated uh, Harvard University's uh, cybersecurity program. Um, so I've just been building kind of on my knowledge and skill set in the cybersecurity world because cybersecurity is uh, becoming more and more of a thing, uh, more and more of a concern, especially um, here in the Yukon. Um, I, I can't say too much about this, but uh, because it's an active uh, law enforcement investigation, but um, earlier earlier to mid last year in 2021, um, there was a um, public utility infrastructure uh, that had been uh, compromised. Um, and it, it, it's infrastructure that would relate to life and death. So, I mean, this is happening in Yukon, it is happening in our backyard. So. It's, uh, it's something everybody needs to be aware of. And, and yeah, that's kind of what, what I've been working on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, as a business owner, leadership's inherent in all that we do. So what are you learning about leadership in yourself and in others as we've navigated through this pandemic? Um, biggest thing is being very quick to react to things. Like I said, um, uh, government will send out communications sometimes on very, very short notice. So you have to react really, really fast. That's the big thing. I mean, um, you know, staff looks to us as leaders um, to give a, a direction. What what will we do in this circumstance? What does this mean? What should we be doing here? So it's it's really being able to, to make those decisions quickly, um, you know, in some cases interpret what's what's being requested of us and, you know, just do the best job you can. That's, that's really the big one. Mm -hmm. As we kind of emerge from this pandemic or, or whenever we do emerge from this pandemic, you know, the, there's transition happening in the Yukon's economy. So what are your hopes and, and sort of dreams for how that transformation happens or what are you paying attention to? Um, honestly, I don't see a ton changing in the Yukon in terms of economy. I mean, rebuilding, it's interesting because, I mean, I have the experience of here in the Yukon and I've got the experience on Vancouver Island. Um, and I can tell you they're not the same experience. Um, our southern um, neighbors have been uh, disproportionately affected by this pandemic than we have. Um, I don't know of a single person in YG who hasn't gotten 
their full pay this entire time. And they are the largest employer in the Yukon, as an example. Uh, there are certain sectors that have been hit certainly very hard. Um, uh, the tourism sector as one example. That's certainly one that's been hit very, very hard. And I think our focus is going to be very specific to these particular sectors. So I, I think we're going to see a lot of um, a lot of support for the tourism sector and, and work on that to rebuild it, because uh, that certainly needs help. Um, as for everything else, I mean, again, you know, outside of this latest wave, I mean, if we go back to November of last year, uh, pretty much everybody's back in the office, everything was back to kind of more or less normal. Um, you know, now we've got people working from home again and such. But yeah, I, I think outside of the niche or specific kind of sectors like like the tourism sector and, and that kind of thing, um, yeah, that's that's where we'll be focusing on specifically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for emerging entrepreneurs looking to start up businesses now? Um, consider what you're starting up. <laughs> um, if you're thinking of firing up a tourism business, you really got to think about that because while tourism certainly was up, you know, later last year, again, we have a new wave of restrictions. So um, I don't know when that kind of total end game is where regardless of what happens, we won't have restrictions anymore. I mean, obviously we are reaching that day. I mean, with Omicron, it's, it spreads like a common cold. That's, that's the uh, transmissibility of it. So we're all going to be exposed and we're all going to get it. It's just a matter of time. Uh, after that, does that mean that's the end of it? I don't know. Um, fortunately, none of us have a crystal ball that we can look into and see that. But uh, I would just be careful about what you're thinking of starting. And, you know, is this something that can be materially affected by restrictions? And I would just be careful with that. Mm -hmm. Any aha moments for you during the pandemic shifts in the way you're thinking about the world? Um. I don't think so specifically outside of, I didn't realize there'd be so many people who are anti-vax, <laughs> which kind of annoys me, but um, no, nothing really specific, I would say. I don't think, um, yeah, not a lot of what's taken place really surprises me. <laughs> Well, I guess, I mean, from a tech perspective, it's been interesting to see in that, you know, with, with anti-vax and the impact of, uh, you know, misinformation and spread on the internet and, you know, and like clickbait factories effectively, right? Like it's oh, been sure. interesting to yeah. see that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, wellness practices, what's been keeping you grounded there in this pandemic? Um, I just focus on the work we have to do. <laughs> That's kind of kept us pretty busy. So I, I just focus on that and, uh, you know, family, of course, focus on family as well. But I mean, we've been, again, we've been pretty lucky in the Yukon. I mean, there was a brief period where there was no school, but otherwise, I mean, my kid's been in school more or less the entire time. So, I mean, it's been pretty, pretty steady and regular for him, which is good because that's routine for them, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I would say that. Any uh, closing thoughts before we, we end today's interview? Um. I didn't think we'd still be here in 2022 <laughs> when we had our first one. <laughs> I, I, I thought the rollout of vaccines would uh, would end this a lot faster. But well, anyways, I mean, we're here. It's, you know, we've got a different set of challenges now. And I'm sure there'll be another set uh, next year, you know. So, well, we just have to uh, just have to roll with it and, and uh, deal with it as it comes. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for your time today, Martin. No problem, thanks.